Thank you, brothers and sisters, again for joining um, and for viewing. And um, this is the last part of this is the third part and last part of this video series um, based on Charles T. Russell. Many Jehovah Witnesses would probably say that this Charles T. Russell wasn't their founder, but he truly was, as history shows and everyone knows by the historical facts. They claim that um, Joseph F. Rutherford was their actual founder, founder, but he became their president and changed the name to Jehovah Witnesses. But they still they have the same views, predictions, and etc. So I will do more videos later. But thank you for watching. And this video isn't to just attack someone, but to just show facts. Just how the book is called, Some Facts and More Facts. So later on, I will do a video based on the, the, the origins of the beliefs of the Jehovah Witnesses. Because it's not new. It was an ancient heresy. So we will dive in to those to those beliefs that were deemed heresy by the early church fathers and we will exploit more beliefs of the jehovah witnesses based on their own books so thank you of every year and that exclusively for the election of the officers of the said society which are three in number the president vice president and secretary and treasurer the money paid into this society is not in any case, in any sense, returnable to the giver and non-dividend bearing. When one gives money to that society, it is gone completely. It is gone forever. But where? It came out in the evidence in the Eagle case that only 50,000 shares had up to date been issued of the 400,000 or 500,000 that could be issued if the shares were all called for. This means that there is a there is represented in the Watchtower Bible and Track Society alone of which Pastor Russell's is the head, and which society is the mother of all his other business corporations between four and five million dollars. It also came out in the evidence that of the 50,000 voting shares, and remember that they are only voting shares. Russell holds 47,000 of them, the other 3,000 being distributed, being distributed unequally among the other four or six members of the society. On every first Saturday in the year, as I said, this society of five men meet to elect the officers and Russell casts for himself, if necessary, 47,000 votes, representing $470,000. He is always elected to the presidency of this religious society without opposition. In fact, he is always elected anon an anonymously, as is it any wonder Russell financially, Russell financially and in every other way dominates that society, and clearly he is that society. He will say, as he did frequently here, the society says, or the society has, or the society does, etc. But the society is always and only himself. When the money is sent into the society, Russell has absolute control over it. In the Hamilton, Ontario Insane Asylum, there is a patient from whom Russell or the society obtained how I do not know the sum of $10,000. This was all the man had, and there is no hope of getting that money returned. Russell, or again the society, for they are generally synonymous terms, recognizes responsibility in this case and pays a nominal sum for that man's keep in the asylum. This is a sample of how the society gets its money. It is no wonder that he, that the society advertises no collections in its meetings. But there is another Russell-like company I wish to speak of. This is left to the last because it has a vital connection with the Watchtower Bible and Track concern. I mean the United States Investment Co. The, the crafty pastor has never been willing to admit that there is and has been the secret Russell-like corporate body. He denied that the United States Investment Co. was a Russell Light Co., that he was a president and manager of it, that he was a stockholder in it, or that he had any interest in it, whatever. 
He also claims that the United States Co. Investment Co. had a long ago become defunct in the People's Pulpit as Russellite, a Russellite paper, volume 3, number 13, in the second column, near the top of page 2. You will find that the pastor explaining to his readers about his company, he says, I have not one dollar invested in it, nor have I been even nom nominally connected with it. I cannot understand how a man who is normal intellectually and morally can make such denials. His own secretary and treasurer testifying to the defense in the Eagle case swore that there was that company, that it was in the present doing business, and that it was a holding company for the Bible and Tract Society. That the reader might see how Russell told the track the, the exact truth and nothing but the truth about himself and his com this company. I will give him an ex an extract from the company's charter. From the records in Pittsburgh, we learned that this company was incorporated June 24, 1896. The following is the extract from the charter. Article 1. Names of subscribers. John A. Bonnet, Ernest C. Hennings, Chat Chase. Chase T. Russell, amount subscribed by each, J. Bonnet $5, Hennings, Hennings $5, and Charles T. Russell $990. Article 2, capital stock, uh, uh, 10,000 dividend into 10,000 share, into 1,000 dividends into 1,000 shares per value of each dollar all paid in. Article 3, for purpose of buying and selling real estate, Patent rights, stocks, bonds, and other securities, merchandise and building houses, etc. Location of association and its principal office, 50 Arch Street, Alcani. Article 4. Name of association is U.S. Investment Co. LTD. So he was lying about this um, company. But there is a proof that... Um, historical proof and courts, actual court documents. So let's go on. Article 5, com contemplated duration 20 years, unless sooner dissolved by majority of the stockholders in number and value of interest. Article 6, Officer E.C. Hennings, Chairman and Manager J. Bonet, and Secret Treasurer and Manager C.T. Russell, Manager. This claim, this claim is now made that that this U.S. United States Investment Co. Ltd. has no property and has been out of business for many years. The, the records in Pittsburgh show transfers of property to this self-same society as late as 1911 and November 1912. You can see that the, US, that the U.S. Psycho Limited is in existence, is doing business, and is just another name for Russell. It is purely a holding company for the Buy One Track Society, and it holds all it can get its hands on. We found that the U USI Co., which is Russell, holds or did hold 28 houses and lots in Binghamton, New York. Several lots in Tacoma, Washington, a farm near Rochester, New York, a house and a, and a lot in Buffalo, a farm in Oklahoma, 100 lots in Texas, a house and lot near Pittsburgh and 5,500 acres of land in Kentucky. This is only a small fraction of what is what this company holds. We must remember, according to the character out of the 1,000 invested in the in that company, Russell has or had $990 of it. It is said that the other 10 was supplied by him, giving the other two men five shares each in order to satisfy the law of the state. However, that may be it is not clear that the USI, USI Co. Limited is altogether and only Russell. As it appears to me, this is the way it works. The international Bible students all over the world and others who are foolish enough to do so send their money into the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, which is Russell. A part of that money is used to pay the expense of circulating Russell's literature paying his advance agents and pilgrims, which always means chiefly the glorifying of Russell, and the rest goes to the U U.S. ICO Limited, which is also Russell and is invested in lands, lots, timber limits, houses. You can see it is all Russell. It is claimed that he is many times a millionaire, and yet he has not one cent that we could find in his own name. 
If Mrs. Russell were not living or if the divorce were not a limited one, would such be the case? To ask the question is sufficient. Conclusion. Sufficient has been said. We must keep the rest of our powder dry and therefore will conclude I will not say anything about Russell's teaching Russell's teaching except to reaffirm what, what was said in the leaflet. The best thing on his teaching is Millennial Dawnism by, by Reverend I.M. Hellman, D.D. published by C.C. C. Cook. Um, the teaching of Russell is contrary to all to all that accepted. So we'll have to check this book, this old book out too. Millennial Dawnism by Reverend. So, um, so the teaching of Russell is contrary to all that is stand, accepted as standard of faith, both Protestant and Catholic. He denies not only the fundamentals of the Bible regarding the God-given plan of salvation, but admits that his views stand against the whole of Christendom, without exception, and denounces every creed and every Orthodox church from the beginning of this dispensation to the present. He claims that he is the only one who has a proper understanding of the scriptures and condemns without exception, the translators of the Bible and other ministers as untrue and deceitful. He does this only to attract attention to himself and his cult. For a man to condemn all other men as liars, deceitful, and cowards, as Russell is doing for the purpose of exalting himself, makes him a deceiver and a false prophet, and the one who is not to be trusted in matters of religion, to say nothing of morals. We charge him with a moral nature very much below par, for which he himself is to blame, nothing to say anything about his improper and professional conduct with the two young women mentioned in the evidence, when his followers must take the following vow. As far as reasonably possible, I would avoid being in the same room with any of the opposite sex alone, unless the door of the room stands wide open, exceptions in the case of brethren, wife and children, mother and natural sisters in the case of sisters, husband, children, father and natural brethren. We are made to think that morals are not what they ought to be. If this is evidence of good morals, I do not know yet what true piety is. This is the vow taken. This is the vow taken by many of the Russellites. What a reflection on the opposite sex. I charge him with the consummate conceit. Under the pretext of advertisement commending the Bible, Commending the Bible, he plasters sanctimonious pictures of his own face all over the billboards and pushes samples of the same picture under doors of our homes. In his papers and in the heading, headlines of his sermons, which he pays the papers to publish, he speaks about great discourses and big crowds, etc. Any mount, any mount bank can get a crowd by advertising himself as Russell does, but he will not get the same crowd a second time. It is not every public speaker or quack that can be employed, a promoter or advanced advertising agent to publish abroad his coming, and the sensational themes of his discourses and pay him $3,000 a year stipend. If you have any doubt about the absolute truth of what I here state, look in the watchtower for January 1st, 1912, and you will find him speaking of himself a hundred and 74 times, and the Lord and Master but seven times. I charge Russell also, also with di di defamatory libel. He swore here that the ministers of all the denominations proclaim in public that they deny what they deny in private, and so knowingly and intentionally were deceiving the people. We charge him with perjury or willfully making a false oath. He denied under oath that he was totally ignorant of the dead languages, etc., and under the test had to confess that he knew absolutely nothing about him. We charge him also with creating unhappy homes in our... We charge him also with creating unhappy homes in our land, interfering between husbands and wives and separating between parents and children. We have received many letters telling how much unhappiness Russell and his vagaries have caused in families. A prominent lawyer in one of our great cities wrote me saying, Russell broke up my home and sent me a letter of Russell's to the lawyer's wife, suggesting divorce with alimony and asking that the letter be not shown her husband. How vulgar. The following is an extract from the letter written by Russell and signed by his own hand. It is dated 
May 15, 1908, an address from the Bible House, Allegheny, Pennsylvania. He says, take up the following prescription. Your husband knows that he has no legal right to interfere with your religious principles and that his case will not stand in court. That is showing in court that he prohibited you from the exercise of your conscience in a reasonable manner would be cruelty and indignity to your person and conscience and be a ground whereon you could have a divorce with alimony sufficient for the support of yourself and children in reasonable comfort. For I judge that your husband is a man of talent and property. His knowledge of Canadian law is something like his knowledge of the dead languages. We charge him, Russell, with accumulating vast wealth out of the gifts sent in him, into him or the society by the godless on the pretext that it is alone the Lord's work. If these gifts all go to the Lord's work, how can the Watchtower and Bible, Tra Bible Tract Society, which is a purely Russell concern, a getting society and the United States Investment Co., another Russell concern, a holding society have and retain so much property, are charging with fraud, or practicing a course of action which is meant to deliberately deceive the public for personal advantage, you, you will find in the headlines of his people's pulpit that he announces himself, his paper and his quote as interdenominational. That is something that belongs to all, domination, all denominations. In the use of this word, the paper is put into the homes of the people by the authority of the Baptist, Methodist, Anglican, Presbyterian, and even Roman Catholics. What a lie this is. Russell and his satellites would not be allowed in any of the churches, YMCA buildings, or even semi-religious halls on the American continent, or anywhere else where he and his teachings are known. And yet he is an interdenominationalist. You will find also that he has seized upon the layman's missionary movement. And by inserting the word home into the name used to deceive the people to call attention to himself, and to get the Bible studies monthly. Another sheet published by him in the, in, in the home, into the homes. People who do not know any better think when they see this, this paper that it is behind the authority of the great layman's missionary movement of America. This is a sample of how Russell and his followers deceive the people. I charge him with blasphemy or slander of God and his word. On page 298 of his Watchtower of the Issue of September 15, 1910, it is written It is written concerning his books if the six volumes of scripture studies are practically the bible top topically arranged with bible proof text given we might not improperly name the volumes the bible in an arranged form that is to say they are not mere comments on the bible but they are practically the bible itself Furthermore, not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself, but we see also that if anyone lays the scripture studies aside, even after he has used them, after he has become familiar with them, after he has read them for 10 years, if he then lay them aside and ignores them and goes to the Bible alone, though he's, uh, he has understood his Bible for 10 years, our experience shows that within two years he goes into darkness. On the other hand, if he had merely read the scripture studies with the references and had not read a page of the Bible as such, he would be in the light at the end of the two years because he would have the light of the scriptures. What blasphemy! When man thus belittles God's word and makes his own superior to that of God, it seems to be nothing short of the worst kind of blasphemy. Reflect upon it. To confine oneself to the Bible means outer darkness. To take the word of this man and never read a page of the Bible means to be in the light. This inspiration has its origins in the pit of hell. Uh, who is the, this man? He claims to be the servant of Matthew 24 and 46. Does it not appear to be clear that he is rather that man of sin of Thess 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3? Wow, he was a blasphemous person putting his word above God. With all sympathy and sincere regret, I commit this false prophet and shepherd, and shepherd to him who judges righteously. 
praying that the Lord may open his eyes and the eyes of his followers before it is eternally too late. For it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the holy and just God with sins, with sins unforgiven. Russell's Explanation It is now May 20th, 1913. It was on the on the first uh, on the first that the decision of the grand jury was handed down. I have waited all this time to see what Mr. Russell would say in his official organ, Science Watchtower, about his treatment here in Hamilton. Up to this day, no word from him in that paper has uttered has been uttered. S seemingly, it is his purpose to treat the decision of the jury here with absolute silence. So as far as the watchtower is concerned, had the decision been in his favor or had I apologized, it would have been vastly different. The world would have known it long before this, but it seems that many of his followers have been urging him to speak out to explain why he did not and does not take action against me for libel in the civil court. Rightfully, they are eagerly desire desirous to see if at all possible their chief executive vindicate himself as a result of the pressure that has been brought to bear upon him at last he will he has sent out a circular letter dated may 16 1913 to all the readers of zion's watchtower the paper of which is which he is editor explaining why he did not take action against me in the canadian civil court these are his exact words. I did not think it worthwhile to sue Reverend Ross for money damages when he had no money. When he thinks it is to his advantage and thus draw public attention to himself, he goes about saying that the preachers in Babylon have lots of money, for they get such big stipends. But this poor preacher has no money. I wonder how much he wants. When Mr. Russell asked me to apologize, he assured me that he had no unkind feelings, that his purpose in taking legal action was not to put me in jail, but rather to stop me in a wrong course and to clear himself. He confessed that he did not have the power to stop me, as Saul of Tarsus was stopped. Of course, he had no ulterior motive in taking the action that he did. Now he tells his followers that the reason that he did not take action in civil court for money damages is because I have no money. Just think of it, no money, then plainly he is not anxious about clearing himself. A five cent verdict or a verdict without one cent damages in his favor would go a long distance in clearing him and restraining others from exposing him. It is money that he is after. It, is this not in perfect keeping with the whole of his methods in the Judaized and paganized religious propaganda? Had I money, but of course I have no money, then he is sure positively that the civil court of canada would give him some of it i am sincerely sorry that i have no money and that the wildful brooklyn pastor knows it the washington post has lots of money that paper exposed him and russell took action in the civil court of the state for libel against that paper asking for a large sum of money the civil court gave him judgment for the enormous sum of one dollar he did not get very much money that time the Post had lots of money, and why did he only get one dollar by the judgment of court? The Brooklyn Eagle has an abundance of money, because that paper compelled him to stand forth in the limelight in his true colors. Russell sued them in the Civil Court of New York for the handsome sum of a 100000 The Civil Court gave judgment against him, thus justifying the Eagle for exposing him. And now Mr. Russell tells his followers as an explanation which is certainly satisfactory to many of them, that the reason for not taking further action against me is because I have no money. The fact is that he took action in the civil court of New York and failed, and then thinking that he would be successful, he took action against me in the criminal court of Canada. The both courts have pronounced him pronounced against him, him, and he stands before the world still covered with the many sins charged against him. All right, thank you, brothers and sisters. So this concludes this, the end of this thing at book. And you can you can find this book on PDF if you want to share it or share it to a friend or read it yourself. Keep it in your records. But this book this book here exposes a founder of Jehovah Witnesses, and um, it shows what kind of character this man had. He was very van vainful, exalting himself, promoting himself, promoting his own words 
uh, above God's words, going saying the blasphemy that people wouldn't be lost with his teachings, but if they had the Bible alone, they would be lost. That's just blasphemy. And this demonic is straight from hell. And this man was all about money. He would cheat on his wives and etc. And even, even more damning than his moral character is his teachings. His teachings of, of rejecting Christ as God. His teachings on salvation. His teachings on, on a lot of things. And, and destroying families, which the Jehovah Witnesses still destroy families. So his spirit just were left on his church. And men are still destroying families and causing problems. So... You see the testimonies of people's lives, how this religion just puts people in bondage, and it's just horrible. So false doctrines create sinful lives, create bondage, and all these false prophets have all these things in common. And I will do a video on, on how false prophets have a lot of similarities because their father is Satan. I have I have uh, learned about a lot of false prophets, Joseph Smith, Muhammad, and others, and they all have these things in common, those same attitudes, same morality, and etc. So God bless you guys, and I have more interesting videos. Share it, subscribe. Thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.